but I felt like I didn't have control over my thoughts as much as I thought. everybody I hope you're having a lovely lovely day I want to talk about therapy the reason being is that I feel like there is still a stigma against you know mental health and caring more about your mental health to the point of getting therapy and I wanted to share my experience in seeing a therapist so that maybe it ends a little stigma you know against getting therapy for people or maybe somebody who really wants to go see a therapist but is nervous about how friends or family might feel if they find out can hopefully watch this video and know that you are fine you are completely normal <laughs> overall in today's video i want to talk about one why i decided to see a therapist in the first place to the financial uh, investment that seeing a therapist includes, at least for myself. And three, I wanna share what I've learned from seeing a therapist, just a little something I learned. I've learned a ton, but one little epiphany I had that I wanted to share. And then four, I actually have a book recommendation for you all. Even if you don't end up seeing a therapist, I think this is a great book to have. <laughs> but let's start with number one and why I decided to go see a therapist. So when I was in Chicago, as you know, through a previous video I made, I had this panic attack and it really threw me for a whirl. The reason being is that I felt like I didn't have control over my thoughts as much as I thought. Uh -uh. <laughs> which was actually really scary for me though because you know you think something's a little bit more stable and then you realize it's not and you're like wow I really have to work at getting control of things so after some time of being kind of anxious every single day post this panic attack I said you know what I have to you know see if I can try to uh, fix this issue that I'm facing so I wanted to see a therapist and I want to note too that I specifically wanted to find an LGBT therapist because I, or someone that knows about, you know, gay stuff, I guess is really the plain and simple, uh, because I knew that I was going to be talking about my experiences, you know, throughout my entire life with this person. So I wanted to make sure they were comfortable with it. And so don't be afraid to be picky when it comes to finding a therapist that, you know, fits your needs. But overall, the reason for seeing a therapist was to just have someone to talk to that wasn't a family or close friend, because I think having a person in that situation can offer a really unique perspective that might be able to help you think things out a little bit better and that's what therapy is it's you finding your own solutions to your own problems with someone there to help guide you through it financially I think that I was a bit baffled because I thought that therapy would be a lot more expensive without insurance I think it was like 120 uh, for an hour session which I've seen higher rates than that but I'm sure you know it varies within like 120 to 200 kind of area and then I have probably almost like just in case of emergency type of insurance and it's actually covered and only cost me like $30 a month per session and I just do one session a month so that's pretty cool I think that's not crazy obviously it's still a premium but it was actually free for me to have therapy over the time that COVID was happening which I thought was really cool. Even though for me, 30 to $120 is totally doable uh, within my budgeting, I know that it's not for a lot. So if you're able to have therapy, treat it as a gift because it truly is. Mental health, you know, gaining uh, strength in your mental health is a gift. So now let's talk about something I've actually learned through therapy. And the reason why I want to share this is because I think that it will help give others an idea of what they could expect maybe, or just in general to break down the fear of what uh, happens in the therapy session, I guess you could say. But overall, it's a lot of talking. Obviously, it's a lot of me sharing my personal life about 
you know, thoughts I might have or things that uh, I've dealt with growing up. And one thing that we actually came out of this was obviously being a puka shell wearing necklace, uh, friends with a lot of girls, kind of effeminate sounding man. I was clearly bullied in school. And I would say that I didn't realize it, but one of my defense mechanisms for that was saying like, oh, you know, this person might be bullying me, but I'm going to be better than them somehow in the future. I'm going to have maybe superpowers. And my whole thing was tied around superpowers, which is not a surprise to me. Growing up, I always really liked things like X-Men and anything with superpowers. So I was really on this kick that maybe one day I would have superpowers. Like that was an idea I had growing up. And I even thought that maybe, I don't know if you saw a Disney movie with the mermaid kid and he like on his 16th birthday, got his powers, I was like, oh, maybe it's an age thing. Maybe like, I'm gonna get superpowers. Again, not even describing what the superpower was, like not saying like, oh, I'm gonna get telekinesis at this point. I just had this idea of superpowers or something supernatural or something uh, grand, something great. And I realized through talking with my therapist that I never really dealt with getting rid of that defense mechanism <laughs> as, you know, in my more adult years. What that means is I think, uh, and again, this is not definite, this is not facts, but what I think happened was that I started to kind of use it almost as a defense mechanism as an adult of like, you know, I'm not happy now, but I'm going to be because I'm doing something grand, almost this like grandiosity of things. And I realized I really needed to come to terms with that, that and that I, you know, was not going to be getting supernatural powers, obviously. Uh, but, you know, in the future, who knows? Maybe I'll get superpowers in a different form. Maybe power, maybe influence, who knows, to make change. But overall, as an adult, I needed to come to terms with that. I don't need that defense mechanism anymore. I don't need to tell myself I'm going to have superpowers. I already know I'm fine. And that was a huge epiphany for me because that mentality really did follow me a lot throughout my younger years. So it was really cool to work through that. And again, not that really anything changed. It was just a way for me to understand what I was thinking about and why I was thinking about it, which I think helps tremendously on a day to day of just in general, understanding yourself a lot more. And that's what I would say comes out of therapy. It's understanding the things you do, uh, the reasons why you do them a lot more than you did before, which is why I think that therapy is such a cool thing to have, even if you're thriving, even if you, you know, a lot of people obviously see a therapist when they're struggling or in that downhill, but that's honestly why I think therapy is for both people who are maybe struggling to combat something themselves and they need help to do so, and for people that are even doing well, because I think understanding yourself is, like I said, truly a gift and it's something that people, you know, should consider. And if you already understand things about yourself, then that's great. You did it without a therapist and I commend you. <laughs> Uh, but sometimes people just need a little bit extra help. And lastly, I wanted to talk about this book I've been reading. And the reason why I like it so much is because it calms me down every time I read it. It's a book about mindfulness, essentially. And mindfulness probably has a lot of definitions by now because people throw it around a lot. But to me, it's having power over your mind and just, again, understanding of why you think some way or why you're acting some way. It just helps with that. And it's given me a lot of peace in reading it and a lot of understanding of who I am as a human being first, aside from what society has brought me up to, you know, realize about myself or think about myself. And that's what I really appreciate about it. But it's called <laughs> The Power of Now uh, by Eckhart Tolle. Hopefully I'm saying that right. I'll link it down below for the Amazon hardcover version of it. But overall, this book has been really great. Every time I open it, I love it. I read it before bed, honestly. And it's a book that you don't rush through. It's not, you know, you trying to get to a conclusion. You're kind of reading it section by section and really sitting with what it's talking about and how it applies to you. And even, honestly, I've spent time working through things that the book has uh, talked about. So uh, the book's, you know, I'm not in a rush to finish it. I think I am actually close to finishing it, but uh, let me know if you want me to do a book review on it as a whole. I might just do it without you all even saying anything. <laughs>
overall, uh, reading this book alongside with having a therapist to talk to, I think is really cool because a lot of the strategies it talks about with thinking and acting and what have you, uh, I think applies to things that I talk about in my therapy sessions. So I think that's really cool and almost as like a double down on you know the whole situation. That is what I have for you guys today on therapy. If you want me to talk more about this topic, let me know in the comments below or your thoughts on therapy in general in the comments below. And of course, I answer every comment, so feel free to leave questions that you have about my experience that I've just talked about. Like I said, uh, I hope that this gives some transparency into the process of things and that you learned a thing or two. So other than that, I hope you all have an amazing day and yeah, that's it.